Hello, welcome to MJR RPG, a podcast or tabletop role-playing games, reviews, replays, etc. and so forth. Though at this point, it's really just reviews for Call of Cthulhu scenarios. The following is a review of Chaosium's classic Call of Cthulhu scenario, Paper Chase, originally written by John Sullivan and revised by Mike Mason. The first part of this review is pretty light on spoilers for players and keepers, but the latter half is full of spoilers, so players should leave then. In short, included in the starter set as the first scenario for good reason, Paper Chase is very easy to run and play for a pair of beginners, but with a unique spin that gives it legs for more experienced players and keepers as well. Paper Chase covers 11 pages of the starter set's third booklet, 9 pages of straight scenario text, 1 page of stats, and a full page illustration. The somewhat beefy page count hides a short and simple scenario that really only takes 2 or 3 hours to get through if the player doesn't meander too much and the keeper doesn't add anything. Ample keeper notes and rule explanations bolster the page count significantly and are well placed to make running the scenario as smooth as possible for a beginner keeper. The scenario is best suited for a single investigator, making it a one-on-one -on -one duet session, though an additional player could take along. More than two players would of course be possible, but might make things too easy while also at the same time overcomplicating the session. If a larger group was dead set on playing the scenario, the keeper may have to think up some extra content to satisfy the player count. The scenario concerns investigating the theft of books from an estate under the care of a man named Thomas Kimball, as well as the disappearance of the estate's last owner and Thomas's uncle, Douglas Kimball. From there, the investigators left to their own devices, with lots of hints and clues given from the outset so as not to overwhelm the new player that might not be used to free reign investigation. As suggested in a Seth Skorkowski video, on my run of the scenario, I changed the investigator and Thomas's relation to Douglas Kimball. While I'll go into more details in the spoiler section below, making the relationship familial put much more weight on the scenario's events and gave the player much more role-playing opportunities. Even if you're a player going into this scenario, it may be worth suggesting this to your keeper. Overall, Paper Chase is simple and smooth enough to make for a perfect first session between a single player and keeper, while having a unique tone that keeps it appealing to more experienced players as well. You can find Paper Chase included in the Call of Cthulhu starter set, available on DriveThruRPG, Chaosium Store, Amazon, or your local game store. The following section is packed full of spoilers, so if you're a player, you should probably stop listening here, unless you just don't care about spoilers at all. Paper Chase is on paper, haha, uh -huh, very straightforward. The investigator needs to cover why books are disappearing from Thomas Kimball's library, and maybe find out what happened to the missing Douglas Kimball as well. While experienced players will put their detective caps on and start hunting for clues and questioning everyone they come across, and new players are given obvious clues and hints on how to conduct initial investigation, it is entirely possible for an investigator to simply plop down in the estate's library and wait for the thief to return. With some successful stealth rolls, they can follow the thief and unravel the whole mystery pretty much right away. But with encouragement from the keeper, the investigator should go about some detective work before night comes around. They can poke about the estate library to see what books are missing, talk with Thomas, a neighbor, or the gravekeeper at the nearby cemetery that butts up against the estate property. Hmm. Having done all this work, the investigator likely gets the idea that whoever, or whatever, is stealing books is originating from the cemetery and with enough investigating and some clever guesswork, the player could probably guess who the perpetrator is. Tracking the thief isn't particularly difficult unless the investigator gets violent. In a fun twist, there isn't really any villain in this scenario, and if the investigator is calm and patient, the thief is content to have a little chat for a final scene. If the investigator is overly suspicious or violent, then they could have a fatal fight on their hands, but the scenario goes through great lengths to avoid this unless the player is dead set on it. The suggestion from Seth Korkowski to make the investigator a relative of Douglas Kimball makes this final scene much more impactful, as it turns out the thief is Douglas himself. And not only that, but Douglas is transforming into a ghoul, and this is their final goodbye before he goes to live underground forever with the corpse eaters. Without a familial connection, this ending is a twist, but not an especially emotional one. It's certainly creepy in a way, but with a shrug the investigator can just say goodbye to Douglas and be done with it. For my run, I had the investigator be Douglas's daughter, and changed Thomas from a nephew to Douglas's son, and obviously the investigator's brother. This was the player's, my wife's, first foray into not only Call of Cthulhu, but role-playing games in general. Having this direct connection to the story gave her a firm foundation to role-play off of, 
rather than requiring her to completely make up how or why her character is involved in the story. For the setup, I had Douglas be a largely estranged father, with neither the investigator nor Thomas being much involved with their dad for years until he disappeared, and Thomas inherited the house. Douglas was not a particularly bad father, but he was always distant and somewhat disinterested. He loved his children, but didn't seem to understand how to care for them, much less anything else in life besides his book. This change not only makes the farewell scene hit much harder, but makes the whole scenario have a sort of bittersweet nostalgic tone, as the investigator reunites with their brother and explores their old childhood home. It also lets the Keeper make greater use of Thomas as a guiding or backup NPC, as they are more inclined to help the investigator if they seem stuck or ask for assistance. For me and my player slash wife, this started a three scenario mini campaign, continuing into Vengeance from Beyond and ending with Mr. Corbett, and Thomas stuck around as a companion NPC up until the end. It was a nice NPC player relationship, with the two of them sharing the odd experience of their father becoming a goat dog man that lives in the dirt. Overall, I heartily recommend Paper Chase as not only a great introduction to Call of Cthulhu, but with a few tweaks, also as an unexpectedly heartfelt little story in an otherwise pretty horrific game. Again, you can find Paper Chase included in the Call of Cthulhu starter set, available on DriveThruRPG, Chaos Game Store, Amazon, or your local game store. Thank you for listening. As always, thank you to Cryo Chamber for use of their album Cthulhu. Links to their Bandcamp and YouTube in the show notes. Until next time, have a good one. <laughs>